What brought you to town? Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> I brought my daughter to see her uh, this summer, and it was epic. We had a great time. Oh, that's awesome. And that makes complete sense. How old is your daughter? She is 20. Oh, wow. Okay. I've been to hundreds of festivals in my life. I'm a huge music nerd. Um, and I've always I was, you know, ambivalent about her catalog. I love my daughter, loved her, and I love that she's a really good human. But this show in Nashville, uh, it was delayed a couple hours by pouring rain, and she played mm -hmm. until her whole set until one in the morning and leaned into it like Prince at the Super Bowl. And it will go down as one of my top three. I saw wow. Guns N' Roses when their first album came out, right? Like I've seen every big act you can imagine. She will go down by far on the Mount Rushmore of live performers. I, I have seen her like four times with my kid. I have such respect for her. And I, for most of my career, had, had avoided being pigeonholed into a beat. I love politics. I love entertainment, but I don't want to eat, eat either one of them every day, you know? And so, but I realized that climate is the one beat that includes everything. Everything in our lives depends on a livable planet. We think about it like a list when pollsters come around election. How important is the climate to you? Climate is the whole restaurant, every menu item, foreign policy, health care, you know, justice, social justice, food, shelter, transportation is tied to a livable ecosystem. And, a, and, a, and, a, and we just happen to be born in this Goldilocks moment on the one planet that supports life as we know it. And we just, we take that, that for granted, right? So I sort of leaned into that, but then it was hugely depressing. And Dr. Martin Luther King didn't say, I have a nightmare. Everybody was living the nightmare. He had a dream, you know, and we don't talk enough about um, what life could look like. I structure the book around Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which I took for granted, never thought about the bottom of my pyramid, food, mm -hmm. water, air, temperature, you know. Um, but I argue, and, I, and I, as I came around to this conclusion that the top of the pyramid of needs, which is love and esteem and sort of self-actualization, that what we go to seminars and yoga retreats and all these things trying to chase satisfaction in our consumerist sort of relentless treadmill lifestyle, I argue if we pay attention to each other around the bottom of the pyramid of needs, and I, that it will fulfill us in ways that supersede um, sort of what we get out of modern life. And it's what indigenous communities I see around the world who are connect with each other and with their natural environment uh, have a much higher sense of, uh, in, in some places, uh, mental health and, and connection and community. The thing that makes us special is stories. You know, we, we our ancestors at some point developed, discovered fire and started cooking and unlocked the nutrition that builds these big brains that can imagine alternate realities, imagine different worlds, and then share that vision with the masses and, and move people in different ways. And so everything in our lives, currencies, flags, borders, religions, all of these are just the stories we've agreed upon and they're always under revision. And so the stories we tell around energy supplies and modern life and sacrifices and all of that are have been told by a very few people who have very vested interests in that status quo. If you connect with people uh, about what it is they love, and I've seen this um, on my reporting trips around the world, where somebody who I know is, is a blood red conservative or a big fan of, of a political party that doesn't want to lean into the science around climate change, they might be a fisherman, they might be a duck hunter, they might be a farmer, they might be somebody. And if you can just connect with them on the changes they're seeing and not tie it to the politically loaded words that get used in campaign ads and and just by saying the word climate change that that has been so loaded uh over the years you have 99 percent of things in common that you don't even know right that that are possible for you if you can just get past that
everybody in a C-suite, no matter what, you know, what co corporation or what sector you live in, am I helping or hurting? You know, am I doing something mm -hmm. that is changing life for the better for myself and my kids? Or, or do we keep sort of living on a steady diet of rationalization and this is the way we've all always done it and, and it's so easy to just get stuck in the status quo. But what's happening is a whole generation of new consumers is, is changing the way they fill their pyramid of needs. It's, it's changing how they think, right? So Yvonne Chouinard, the, the, the founder of Patagonia, famously would say to his own customers, before you buy that puffer jacket, are you cold or are you bored? <laughs> do you really need that, that? Or do you, or, you know, could you wear your old one for another year or something? Just thinking about the hidden costs of filling our pyramids. If you enjoy this podcast, please make sure to subscribe. And to stay updated on everything that the Action Catalyst is up to, Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Action Catalyst Podcast and on Twitter at Catalyst underscore Action. And thanks for listening.